Хамза Чимаев вчера стал героем новостных сводок из-за заявления Ареля Хильвани о том, что UFC работает над его боем против Леона Эдвардса, однако он отметил одну деталь. Look at him crying all the time. His shit boys is came out. Но вот произошло небольшое совпадение. Хамзад в это время после ответа опустился на две строчки. Он и так занимал девятую строчку, теперь он опустился аж на одиннадцатую. Было ли это месть у руководства или просто совпадение, неизвестно. Это лишний повод обсудить это в комментариях. So because the trash talk got so personal affecting your family and clearly has given you a, a justified uh, negative emotion, it, has that informed how you approach trash talk for your future opponents? No, I'll still talk. I, I, I'm, that's, the, that's the person I am. I'll talk to you. You want to you copy me, I'll clap back. That's, that's how I've grown up. That's the way me and my friends grew up. It's, but there's a line. There's a line on, on what you say and what you do. And, It's not trash talk to call my wife a pedophile or say that the kid isn't even mine. That's not trash talk. That's abuse. That's horrible. And no person on the planet deserves that. And I feel like we've seen it recently and the two main culprits are in Kobe and Sean Strickland. Kobe bringing up Leon's dad and Sean just being negative towards every single person possible. It shows a very dark age in MMA, and this is what not what the sport's about. The truth is, we're fighters, we're martial artists, but the UFC is so much more. The UFC is about being entertaining. The UFC is about putting on amazing fights and building a fight. Who was the best f fighter we've ever seen in this organization who's had the most success? It's Conor McGregor. And what he did was emotionally connect fans to his journey by talking, the build-up, the excitement, the fights. He talked the talk, he walked the walk, he backed it up, and everyone started to believe him. There's a fine line of what's right and what's wrong. And I feel like lately, the negative has started to overtake the positive. And it's, it's not interesting. I don't believe that anyone here enjoys hearing the stuff that has been said recently. The UFC is full of amazing fighters. Let's talk about the fighting. Let's talk about the skill set. Let's talk about the knockouts. Let's talk about the build-up. There's some amazing stories that fighters have. I'm interested, and I know that. And it's on me to go out and do my job and have fun. So this isn't trash talk anymore. This is just me going out there with business and proving people right and proving people wrong. Every fight to me is do or die. You know, so that's why that's the only reason why losing sucks so much, right? So, but we looked at a lot of things uh, in, in the last prep, in the last fight, and the way I felt in the fight, the, the mentality surrounding it, and we made adjustments. And uh, yeah, they're going to pay dividends on Saturday. It, it's one of those things where everything in hindsight is 2020. So we. we There were some things that were suboptimal in the last camp. There were some obstacles that we had to work with and work around. And end of the day, the result is what it was. And it wasn't the result we were after. So what we did was we adjusted. We, we made some changes. We threw ourselves straight back into the gym. And here I am, fight week once again. He's a great fighter. He's been in the conversation of the top 10 forever. Like, he's a, yeah, he, he's, he's a good fighter. He's a power puncher, he pushes forward, he likes controlling and dictating the fight through that way. But I don't think he's encountered anyone like me. I don't think anyone has until they come up against me. And, mate, I've done everything for, 
I've ticked every box, I've crossed every T, I've dotted every I in the last few months leading up to this fight. So I'm going into this fight just cocked and ready. The middleweight division's moving. It's moving a lot. There's a lot of fluidity in it and it's rife with opportunity. You know, winning opens doors more, more so now than ever. Do you have any theories of why in these past few fights no one's been able to defend that belt? It's been four new champions in the past four middleweight title fights. <laughs> Mate, fighting's hard. And I think, I think, yeah, it depends who shows up on the night. That, honestly, it, it was like that with the, the Sean and Drickus. It was like that with Sean and that Izzy. It's, it just is what it is. Who would be a more important rematch to get back for you at this point? Drickus or Izzy, do you think? Um, oh, Drickus is a sore spot for me because I didn't turn up. I didn't perform. And, you know, it's important for me to run that back. the comments you made about not wanting to give a title shot to some of these other contenders it seems like it's made you know yeah rodriguez and brian ortega very upset they've done some interviews um saying you know that they really want to fight you do you think because those fights are now bigger and there'll be more tension would you consider it who or? doesn't want to fight me right now who not i didn't become a usc world champion yet i have three more days to do it they are really calling me out everyone everyone why Because <laughs> they want to fight you. Yeah. And they're a big deal. Yeah. Red Panty Knights. <laughs> it's just like I've always said. You can do battle with strength. You can do battle with wits, but no weapon can beat a great pair of chests. Uh, uh. Yeah.